This week on the Storycraft Society, we're making an armored wagon. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin. This is the Storycraft Society, and this week I need an armored wagon. Technically not this week. This leg of my current D&D campaign, I need an armored wagon that my players are going to be escorting from one place to another. So I wanna make one. I've never made an armored wagon before and I have some ideas of what I think I want to do, but this is gonna be a scratch build video. I have no plan here other than the little sketch that I have already made. All I can say is let's dive into it. We're flying by the seat of our pants on this one, so hopefully, fingers crossed, it turns out. Let's go. So here's the general idea of what I have for this so far. It's gonna be a wagon that is like one story here and then there's like a second story up on top. It'll look very fantasy, at least that's my thought process. Then I'm hoping that I can make the whole thing look like it's made out of metal, but then all of these lines here will be like wooden timber lines. Also as a side note, I am not winning any drawing awards. And for all of you out there who are not very good at drawing and then you worry that that's not going to translate to crafting stuff, I will be your proof of concept here. You can suck at drawing and still make some pretty cool things. So with that said, I'm gonna start using craft sticks to make an undercarriage. And then I'm gonna start cutting out these foam pieces that will end up making the walls of the wagon. All I can do is check in with you after all that's done and we'll see how it turns out, but hopefully it turns out well. So now that I have all of my pieces cut that are gonna end up being the undercarriage of my wagon, I pulled out a piece of medium weight chipboard, and this is actually going to be what is gonna lock all of these pieces of wood together. So I'm gonna end up cutting this to shape and then gluing that onto these, and that should end up making what holds all of these locked together. In fact, I just kind of had a realization. I'm actually not gonna do that. I'm gonna actually cut strips of this and just run strips across the bottom of this. That'll look more thematic with the bottom of the undercarriage of the wagon. And it also will be less of this that I have to worry about and it'll achieve the same goal. So with this all finished up, now it's time to move on to what I consider my favorite part of any build like this. And that is gonna be getting my foam walls all cut up so we can start to see what the shape of the thing is gonna look like up on here. The way I'm seeing it, it's gonna be like building a little foam house, just a lot less area. And it'll just be kind of like unique and interesting shapes. But uh, again, I'll probably throw it into a time-lapse right here and then show you what getting all of these pieces cut out will look like. Let's go. Okay, so I got my pieces cut. I got this kind of trapezoid looking piece, uh, two of those for my side walls. And then I got these two end pieces. And what we need to do is get those put together. And then once they're put together, then I can get them glued down to this base here. And then once I have that done, then I can start working on the upper floor. So I think that's next. <laughs> also, as a side note, I'm not measuring any of this stuff out. Like, I, I mean, I'm going off of like the basic idea of what I have for a sketch, but I'm not like, you know, using a, a template or something. So feel free when you're doing crafts like this, just to explore and try stuff. Cause that's honestly how you get stuff figured out. Okay. Let's jump back into it. So here is where we are currently with the wagon. It doesn't look like much right now, but I'm really hoping that as I start to add pieces and timbers and things, it'll start looking a lot better. The next thing that I'm gonna start doing is adding timbers all across it. I think that really doing the horizontal and vertical bracing is gonna be the stuff that really makes this start to shine. I also think that the roofing is going to make a huge difference, but I'm still not positive what I'm doing there yet. It might end up being like bent cardboard. 
I, I just, I, I'm not sure. And the problem with that is, is that that makes it that I don't a hundred percent know how I want to accomplish that. That was kind of rambly, but that's where we are. Timbers are next. Once I get a bunch of those on there, I think that's probably when I will show you it next. So as I have been placing my timbers on this thing, I kind of had a realization and the realization that I had is kind of the penalty that comes with not thinking everything through and crafting, you know, as you go. If I do this thing where this part of the wagon is metallic or like, you know, to look like steel plating or something, it's gonna look awfully boring if every part of the wagon is exactly the same. So I realized now that I want this upper part of the wagon to be like all wood and then this bottom part to be steel plated. So with that said, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do and probably it's still gonna be as soon as I've done all of the timbers, then I'll come back and talk about it, but I've gotta figure out something to do up there that will make that upper part look like it is wood planking. I'm jumping back into it. All right, so I am reaching the end of my day one on this project, and this is what I got to. Now I have two little things that I still want to do on this piece before I call it quits for the day, but I'll show you just a quick little overview of what I've done so far. So I put in these bigger timbers, a quarter inch by a quarter inch, and then I ended up cutting them out so that they notched in to the upper part here. I ran that same quarter inch, but a little thinner for this particular timber and this timber for a little bit of visual diversity. And then all the other timbers are 3 16 by a 16th thick that way. Uh, so they're gonna be what make up all of my accent pieces. Now, what do I still have to do? The first thing is I noticed that these little bits were a little too flimsy. So I took and drove a pin into the front of this one. That's gonna lock this up so it's gonna make it a lot more sturdy than it was. So I have to do that on this side. And then after I finish that, then you'll notice that this front is empty here and this is where the driver's seat is going to be. So I'm going to make a driver's seat that's gonna fit right in here and that's actually really, really simple. It's a three piece set of foam. So there's going to be the seat that's the driver's seat. For me, this is three eighths of an inch by a half inch and that's going to sit down right here. And then for the armrests, I cut these little thin pieces. These are like 3 16 ish thick, and then they're 5 8 tall by a half inch, and then that's going to sit onto the end there like that, and that's going to make the armrests. I'm gonna get those glued in place and textured up, and then I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. I lied, and I lied so <laughs> so much <laughs> there's little bits of foam everywhere i just breathe them into oblivion the reality is is that i got this far on my piece and i started putting timbers after timbers after timbers on eventually i got to this point that's where i'm going to end it for today but tomorrow should be the last of the sculpting and i mean hey maybe i'll get some of the paint on tomorrow i'll check in with y'all tomorrow morning Good morning and welcome to day two of this project. When I woke up this morning, I decided to knock a couple of things out while I was still groggy and would have sounded like a zombie, but all of the things that I did were very simple. In my opinion, not that exciting for me to have very detailed and documented on camera. So the first thing is gonna be I put a roof substructure piece on top. I really debated what I was gonna do here. I thought about doing a single angle roof. I thought about doing a little flat top like I did for this platform over here. But in the end, I decided to go with this regular shaped roof because I figured it would give the piece a little bit of balance and I thought that the wood planking shingles would look nice on it. Speaking of wood planking shingles, that's what I did next. I just cut 3 8 strips of XPS foam, textured them to look like wood, and then glued them down on top. That was easy peasy. And then the final detail that I did was I wanted a stove cap. Those 
those little tiny details are what really make a build like this come to life. And kind of in my head, the story is this wooden part up top. That's like their sleeping quarters and cooking area and all that stuff. So I decided to put that stove top up there. I just used a little piece of paper that I coiled up into a cone, glued that together with some PVA glue, and then I used a paintbrush tip protector, cut that to size, glued that up in, and then popped that down onto the top of the piece. The only other thing that I did was I got the back door ready to go, and that was really easy. I took my medium weight chipboard and I cut out strips. I decided to do four instead of my usual three this time because it needs to look more reinforced like it's this heavily armored wagon. But then I made a little door handle out of a craft stick and that's on the back there as well. Most of this build is now done. The thing that we have to do next is the wheels. This is a time where I really wish that I had a 3D printer because wheels on a 3D printer would be way easier than trying to craft them out of foam or craft sticks or whatever. If I really wanted to be a try hard about this, I could probably try to make the wheels out of foam and toothpicks so that they have little spokes. But one thing that I really like to think about with a build like this is what is the risk versus reward. If I made the little spokes, I could really mess that up and it could make the build look super, super janky. And I don't think that the amount of reward of having really, really spoky looking wheels is going to pay off in the sense that it's never going to outweigh the risk of potentially how bad me making those spoke wheels could be, not to mention the time that it will take. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna just make a solid wheel out of XPS foam, make it look like wood, and then I'm gonna run a counter plank the other direction so that it looks like it is a reinforced wooden wheel. Is this exactly perfect? No. Is this what a wheel would have looked like? Probably not, at least not on a big, heavily armored thing like this. But I guess you could argue that it's some kind of a cap that's over the wheel or something like that. And it's a fantasy piece, which at the end of the day, as long as it registers as a wagon wheel, that's all that matters to me. So real quick, before I glue my axles on to my wagon, I wanted to talk about how I ended up with these wheels because I decided to go a little bit more extra than I thought I would, and I really like the result. So what I ended up doing was making the wheel exactly how I said I was gonna make the wheel, but then what I did was I added a dowel rod right in the center here. That's just a real thin piece and then glued that in place. And then I took the ends off of toothpicks and I just glued them down in to look like pins. I really think that once this is on the wagon, it's gonna look so awesome, and I could not be more happy with how they turned out, particularly with the fact that they're not spoked wheels, but they do look like really big, heavy-duty wooden wheels. I'm gonna get this glued on there, and then we're gonna move on to painting this thing up. Let's go. So when it comes to painting this thing, I'm going to stick to my usual process with just a couple of little changes. When it comes to the actual wooden pieces, I'm going to base coat those in Wildwood, which is a contrast paint by Citadel. Specifically, I chose this color because I wanted to give this thing the heavy, armored look, so I wanted that heavy, dark wood. The next thing that I did was all of the foam areas, I went over with Black Magic Craft Base Coat. This does two things. One, it strengthens up the foam, but also it gives me my black base coat with which I can then paint up from. Speaking of painting up from that, I start doing my actual base coats. The first one I'm gonna do is a black metal base coat on all of the steel areas for the plating on the lower part of the wagon. And I did water this down a little bit so I got some of that contrast color below of the white foam then covered in the Black Magic Craft base coat and then finally with the black metal paint over top. I base coated all of my foam that looks like wood with raw umber. This is a color that is a super dark brown and that's going to give me, you know, that super deep dark look for all of the wood. And I also watered this down to make sure I got some color variation with the black base coat underneath. My mid-tone on all of those foam wood bits is going to be Craft Smart Brown. This is just one click up in brightness from the raw umber. And then I'm going to do an overbrushing, but a real light overbrushing over the very top of the whole thing with Territorial Beige to get all of my highlights. The next thing that I'm gonna do is all of those places where I put metallics on that first layer of the wagon, I'm gonna 
cover that in a Nullin oil wash. One thing that's gonna do is separate the wood from the steel areas and leaving kind of a black line the whole way around the outside, but also it's gonna add me just a little bit more color diversity. And this is one of those times where I don't mind the wash pulling in certain places because it just gives that aged steel look. Really, really, really like how this turned out. Now for the stove pipe, I did base coat that in the black metal, but I didn't put the Nullin Oil wash over top, and that's because I want to give it a soot colored look. I'm gonna get that by dry brushing black over top of the whole thing and on the roof areas that are around the stovepipe to look like ash has kind of fallen and stained that wood area. Lastly, for the black, I'm going to take and black out all of the iron looking bars on that back door as well as the handle. That's gonna give the door a nice finished solid heavy metal look. Now to get a little bit of pop of color on the wheels that I like so much, I'm going to take an antique white and paint out all of the axles and the little pegs in the wheels. That way they're gonna really pop out and this is gonna be way too bright because I'm then going to follow that up with snake bite leather, which is my favorite like normal wood color from the contrast paint line. And I'm gonna do that all over the top of those. So now they're gonna be a lighter brown that really pops out from the darker brown color of the wheels. Final thing that I need to do is get all of my rivets all across this back door. And then I'm going to put them all along the metallic steel plating on the sides also. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm gonna pull out my heavy metal metallic paint and a toothpick. And then I'm gonna take my toothpick and I'm gonna dot that in so that I get a little ball of paint on the end. And then just very carefully, I'm gonna take and go boop, just like that. Reload, boop, boop. The boops are required. Just like that. I'll continue down across the rest of this and then I'll do the side walls and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And the end result will look a little something like this. It's not quite as good as sculpting 3D nails or like nail heads into the steel plating, but it's pretty good for a really, really quick result. Coming into the home stretch of the project, I realized that I was missing just a little bit of extra kind of 3D flair on the outside of this build. So what I decided that I wanted to do was have these heavy looking rugs that are hanging off of the side. They could be tents, they could be, you know, they could be a lot of different things, but I wanted something that is hanging down off the outside. So the way that I did that was I pulled out Viva paper towels. I really like Viva specifically because the towel feels almost like cloth and then I cut it into a rectangle. From there, I'm gonna saturate that thing with paint. I picked two different colors. I did kind of a peach color to look like, like a tanny peach. And then I also did this vibrant deep wine red color. And I did that over the whole thing and it's like really, really, really watered down paint so it soaks into the paper towel. Then once that's done, I'm gonna run glue all across it. That's gonna lock this thing together and make it glue up nice and tight. And then I used a paintbrush handle to just roll that bad boy up. And then I'm going to let it dry. This turned out absolutely great for a very quick little project. And actually it makes me want to make rugs like this that I could just stick around as scatter terrain all around my builds. But with that said, I needed a place to hang them. So I'm going to make two more pegs exactly how I did the pegs for the wheels and just drive little toothpicks in and paint them up with snake bite leather. I use string to tie the rugs up and then hang them on the sides. And that is it for this project. This project was a lot more work in some ways and a lot less work in other ways than I was expecting. I'm, I kind of figured that it would be less work than building a house, but it didn't really feel that way. It felt like it was just building a really small house, which I guess makes sense. And where I didn't have to do windows on it, I did have to do the wheels and the little bench and stuff. So this was definitely an interesting project for me, but I am super, super stoked on the final result. Another thing that I've been thinking about basically the whole time that I'm doing this is if I were to make another one, I think I could make some drastic improvements on this one and that would make it look even better but that's part of the fun of crafting and thinking as you go. Sometimes it's an absolute 10 out of 10 and sometimes it's a seven out of 10, but I'm still so pleased with what I've got and my players will be so beyond stoked to see this thing 
rolling along on the table. But that's it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, definitely leave a comment or a like down below or both if you want. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. And the number one way to help any small YouTube channel out is to share their videos with a friend that you think would enjoy it. And if you think that a friend would enjoy this video specifically, definitely share that with them. I would appreciate it so, so much. But that's all I've got for this week. So until next week, I'll be seeing you. Kick ass wagon. Can I say that? That's YouTube.